in general, people are disappointed and hopeless about American policy in Al Qaeda. I'm afraid if there will be a coalition between those terrorism groups, maybe in the near future or in a several years, there will be another Islamic state like ISIS we, we had. Because there is a several radicalism groups in, in, in Iraq, they are going to they are going to grow in, grow in very fast. In the near future, they will make a coalition. It will be a coalition between those different groups. It will be a big threat for the whole Middle East security. Even Iraq and Syria are not stable right now. In general, they are not stable. Welcome to Business Game Changers. I'm Sarah Westall. With the latest moves that Trump has done in the Middle East and the movement of the Secretary of State and John Bolton as the National Security Officer, people are seeing the war drums beating and also what's happening in the Middle East with Iran, with Russia, Syria still going. And I, what I did is I brought on Jazza Fars. He is one of the most famous journalists in Iraq. And he's going to give us a lot of insight as to what happened in Iraq and the country and how people see the United States. And then he's also going to talk about their biggest fear, the, the fear that they're worried that all the different terrorist groups are, you know, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS are forming a coalition as this war drums are getting, getting louder. And what that means for Iraq and for the region, if a war actually happens, people are scared and they think it's it's happening and they think the war drums are beating and they're seeing an escalation occurring and many things happening that are pointing to that. So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about the history and then get to some of those issues. But before we get to that interview, I want to talk to you about a free ebook that's available now that will help you understand how to feed your animals the best food so that they do not get cancer. There's a seven-part series that is going to be starting April 4th on the truth about pet cancer. Over 50% of dogs are getting cancer and cats aren't far behind. But right now they have a free ebook that's available now which tells you what's wrong with their food, how to avoid it, what to feed them so that you can virtually eliminate the possibility of your pets getting cancer. So I will have the link to that here so that you below so that you can get that free ebook today on how to feed your animals proper food so that they aren't getting the cancer that all these foods are causing. Before we get into the interview, I want to let you know that Jazz sticks around and asks a few more questions for my patrons. It's exclusive for patrons, so please support the program. You can go to Patreon under Sarah Westall, and there's lots of extra interview questions that I have, my books, and some other information. And if you don't want to do that, you can also now donate to the program with cryptocurrencies or PayPal. I really appreciate any support that you give me. So much of this program is growing because of the support of my listeners. So thank you so much. And let's get into the interview now with Jazza Fars. Hi, Jazza. Welcome to the program. Hello, Sarah. Thank you so much for this opportunity being on your program. I really appreciate you taking the time. I, I know that you're a journalist in Iraq and you spent a lot of time figuring out what's going on in the area and have a real good sense, you know, of the pulse of the area. Can you give listeners a brief background about you and what you've done? My name is Jessa Ahmed and I graduated from College Law and Political Science at University Slemani. I was number one during four academic years at Department of Political Science, and I'm working as a journalist and as assistant political researcher at University of Slemani. And you, what were your plans originally? Because they changed, didn't they, after the war happened? Yeah, you know. Uh, I think American invasion affected 
every Iraqi people's life and uh, we, we want to have a better country and uh, we want to, to, to have uh, a good society and, and we're really working very hard against it, corruption in the Iraqi government and Kurdistan regional government in Iraq. And, and I think uh, we have to fight against it, corruption and terrorism in Iraq because those things is look like a, they look like a, a cancer for, 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 for the Kurdish for the Kurdish and for the whole Iraqi people. So you were telling me that a life was so different before the Iraq war in 2003. Can you explain what life was like before and then after? Okay, yes. I think before 2003, we have a stable society, a stable economy. At least people, they were very humble and nice, and we, we, we all worked together. I remember uh, uh, when, when, when before the Iraq, before uh, the Iraqi invasion, uh, I, I sometimes I help it with my father, with his father, even I was uh, a little, I was a child, and we all worked together and very happy we have a stable economy. But then, uh, in, in, in the beginning of two, 2003, where when America, uh, when American invasion in, in Iraq, in the beginning, we were very happy. We started to dancing and, and singing uh, because uh, we thought maybe it would be an, a new day for, for every uh, Iraqi people uh, and Kurdish people. And, uh, we, we, we were very happy in the beginning, but day after day, after uh, several years, we figure out we are in a big civil war and, and, and it affected our lives. And then we, we feel it, uh, the Iraqi economy falls down, especially right now. I'm, uh, I'm talking uh, to you, you know, we have a very weak uh, economy and uh, it, it, it affected everybody's life. Well, how did you figure out, because you said it, it took you a while to figure out that you were in a civil war. How did it yeah. happen? Did it slowly happen where the tensions rose and then people were fighting each other? What happened where the yeah. civil war, go ahead. In the beginning of 2003, it was a several groups who, who, who decided to fight American soldiers. Unfortunately, many innocent American soldiers killed by those groups, and, and according to, to the U.S., all of those groups, the terrorism groups, most of those groups, they have a, a support from Al-Qaeda or some of the terrorism groups, and some of them, uh, they came from the, 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 the Iraqi army, the former Iraqi, Iraqi army. They started to, 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 kill, uh, uh, to kill American soldiers, and as a Kurdish, we were, uh, we were upset about, about them because in 2003, the Kurdish nation, it was the only nation who supported uh, the, the, the American policy, po policy in, in, in the Iraq. And then, after 2006, when, when, when uh, we, we, we built a, a government, uh, an Iraqi government, and Nuri Maliki became a prime minister, a civil war started between, uh, between the Sunni and Shia and Kurdish in the, as, as, as a side. And it affected the, everybody's life. And, and unfortunately, a thousand, a thousand people died in that civil war. And, 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 and even it affected the life in the Iraq. So right now, the Sunni and the Shia, they do not trust each other. Because the United States didn't have any plan to make a peace between those different groups in the Iraq. As you know, we have a Sunni, Shia, and Kurdish in, 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 in Iraq. And, and when they, when, when they, after American invasion, maybe they have a, some some small programs to make the peace, but it was not enough. Then we failed it in, in in a big civil war, wars, and it affected everybody's life. So why they got along before, right? Before twenty or two thousand three, before the civil war. Why do you think the civil war was was sparked when they were getting along before? Uh, as you know, 
Now Saddam Hussein is a former president of the Iraq. He was a Sunni. He was a Sunni president, and he persecuted the Kurdish and the Shia people. But then American invasion gave a good chance to to the Shia people to get the power. Uh, then most of the, 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 the most of the the Shia leader they are seeking for the revenge. They started to persecute the, the Sunni people uh, as a revenge. Uh, and that's why a thousand, a thousand uh, people sacrificed, sacrificed in the civil war without, without any media to talk about uh, this basic problem. I know, I, I hope, uh, I think uh, United States had to have a good plan after 2003 to make the peace between those, those nations and those, uh, those uh, different groups and different religions in the Iraq. But unfortunately, they do not have a basic plan to make the peace between those different groups in the Iraq, especially the Kurdish and Shia and Sunni. Well, what do people think of the U.S. now compared to what they thought before 2003? The, in general, people are disappointed and hopeless about American policy because we saw it in 2003 United States is United States is going to hell if we have a democratic government who who uh, who who, uh, uh, who people being their basic, but but unfortunately we have a a, a, a corrupt government who fails down in the corruption and and we do not have a stable security. We have unstable economy also, and and, and it means there is not a normal life in in Iraq because. Uh, having a security and having a, a, an economic, a stable economy is very important for everybody, but we do not have a, a stable economy and we do not have a, a stable security. Maybe, may, maybe after this interview, I'm going to out, somebody shoot me, you know, uh, and, and, and because we have the lake of the security in, in, in all over the Iraq. Uh, Does this interview put you at risk for safety for your life? Uh, I I don't think so, uh, but be, because I'm 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 a pretty good known journalist and I'm fighting against it, uh, corruption and, and and terrorism and uh, I I I think we have to fight against it, terrorism and corruption uh, all over the world and I'm, I'm not worried about my my safety. I'm worried about the people of my 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 nation. I think uh, we have to fight against the terrorism idea and the corruption in, in, in Iraq. Yeah. Very good. I understand. I guess we <laughs> share in that feeling. Why does, or what does the Iraqi people believe the war was for? You know, we were told it was because you had weapons of mass destruction, which wasn't true. So what did the Iraqi people believe? Most of those think is, uh, before I answer your question, I would like to explain something about American policy in, in Middle East. What I understand from American policy, I think it depends on uh, several points. First of all, American policy in the Middle East, they want to protect the Israel, Israel as one of the states in the Middle East. Second, uh, they want to control the oil in, in Middle East. Uh, third, uh, they want to do not let the, 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 the Iranian policy to occupy or, or to affect the as a nation in, 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 in the mid, 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 Middle East. Uh, and the, the fourth thing, in the name of the terrorism, the United States came to, to the, middle, the Middle East. It means one, uh, one of those things is uh, the United States is, is fighting a terrorism uh, uh, ideas. Uh, the United States uh, wants uh, really to, to, to destroy the terrorism and, and uh, they are working very hard in the Middle East to protect it, the Israel national security. So now, did the people of, of Iraq think that they were sacrificed for Israel's security? Did they believe that they don't matter, but Israel does? In 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 some way, we we are thinking uh, we are we are sacrificed uh, because. Uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, behavior. Uh, uh, as you know, before 2003, Saddam Hussein said, I'm going to attack to Israel 
and I'm, I'm going to destroy the Israel, and I do not let the Israel uh, stay in, as a state in the Middle East. It was one of the reasons U.S. decided to you decided to invade invade Iraq or, or, or for 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 the U.S. American invasion in the Iraq. Uh, uh, what, what, so what, Saddam what, what Hussein, let, let me. Yeah. Let me correct you, or let me uh, stop you for a second. Saddam Hussein was talking very aggressively against Israel, which is what you believe triggered the war at that time. Not yeah, was, anything else. Okay, go ahead. Of, yeah, exactly. It was it was one of the it was one of the reasons the U.S. attacked to to Iraq in two thousand three. We figured out at this point after. Saddam Hussein fell down because well, 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 what I understand, Saddam Hussein he was he was the only leader who threatened the national security of the Israel by on, on television directly. What do people think of uh, ISIS in Iraq? Oh, uh, we are thinking ISIS is a is a terrorism group as they have the support from outside abroad. Uh, maybe what what I understand ISIS maybe it's uh, different from the other people. What I'm what I'm thinking I think ISIS created by some of the biggest company of the weapons and uh, and some of the businessmen from around the world. Look at this. <laughs> when ISIS occupied the second largest city in the Iraq, 2014, Mosul, it is the second largest province all over the Iraq. You know they send the oil. From Mosul to outside, it means there is a, there is some multimillionaire people, some businessmen around the world who have a business with ISIS. Uh, I, 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 and, and what what I understand, ISIS wants to control the oil areas. It means ISIS created by whoever it will be to 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 have a business with the ISIS to get in oil. It was I think ISIS uh, uh, they have a they have a, a radical religional idea, uh, religional idea, but uh, they have a pol there are many political reasons behind creating ISIS. So the Iraqi military tried to stop them in 2014, but were not successful. Why do you think they weren't successful in their attempt to hold back ISIS? Unfortunately, the Iraqi military they couldn't stop ISIS 2014, and 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 ISIS controlled the second largest city, Mosul, in 2014, and they controlled more areas. You know, they wants to attack the the the, the uh, uh, And unfortunately, as as the Iraqi people, we thought maybe the American air forces the, um, to help us to 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 stop the ISIS, but they didn't do anything in the beginning. That's why ISIS could control uh, the Sunni areas in easily. And another reason behind this was the Sunni people persecuted by the Shi leaders. From 2006 to now, the power is the prime minister controlled by the Shi people, by the Shi leaders. We have we have uh, three terms for the government, two terms by Nuri al-Maliki. He was a uh, he was a prime minister 2000. Uh, 16 for, for, for eight, eight years from 2016, then uh, Al Abadi. Both of them, uh, they, are, they are Shi people, and their policy affected the Sunni people, they persecuted the Sunni people. As a revenge, the Sunni people decided to help ISIS to, 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 to destroy the Iraqi military easily. They opened the, the Arab Sunni people in Mosul and in some of those areas, they opened their houses for ISIS. They 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 saw them as as a savior, as a savior from American policy and from the Iraqi policy, especially especially uh, the Shi policy. Uh, and that's why the ISIS could control Mosul easily. So, who do you think benefited the most, or benefits now? although they're quite a bit lower, ISIS isn't as strong as they used to be, from what I understand, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but who benefited the most from ISIS's activity? Some of the multimillionaires around the world, and most of the, the, the weapons company. When ISIS... That's the United States. 
and Israel. Yeah, some of the web, the big, yeah, some of the the big weapons company around Europe and United States. Uh, when ISIS controlled uh, the Mosul, the Iraqi military needed to buy, the Iraqi government needed to buy weapons from Europe and from US and Mosul from Russia to, 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 to go back to retake their, those areas controlled by ISIS. That's why uh, the, the weapon companies became be beneficial in this war and in the SSI, some multimillionaires from some of them. The, 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 the Iraqi leaders, they started to, to have in a business with, 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 with ISIS, especially oil business. Do you know, every day, the ISIS sends the oil through Turkey to outside, to the board. Some of those oils went to Europe and went to most of the countries. Who, who, who had the, the business with, with, with ISIS? Those people who, who created ISIS and who supported ISIS to occupy Mosul. So my understanding is that Iraqis are terrified of a conflict with Iran between the United States, Israel, Saudi Arabia, uh, China might be getting involved, Russia. Why are they so terrified that something could happen? As Iraqi people, we are really worried if the United States uh, attack to Iran because the Iraqi, we do not have a stable economy. The Iraqi economy depended on the Iran and Turkey economy. If U.S. attack it to, to Iran, it will affect everybody life in, 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 in Iraq. And I think it will be a famine. And we do not have, a, we do not have a, enough food. And it will be a big civil war in the Iraq for food. And we will have, we will have a lake of the food if, if the United States attack to, to Iran. Yeah. How how many people do you think will die in the region? Not just Iraqis, but Syrians, Iranis, um, you know, people in the whole area if we end up going to war. Just not because of war and combat, but because of famine and lack of basic needs. I think a thousand people sacrificed civilian people especially during the ISIS attack to Mosul and the other province in, in, in Iraq. And also, when the Iraqi military, with, with the help of the coalition against ISIS, who led it by United States, when, when, when they attacked to, to, to retake the Mosul, and a thousand people became sacrificed again in, in Iraq. It's the same thing about Syria. Every day, every, every day, we are hearing from the news, or we are reading, there are some people, some civilian people, sacrificed because because what? Because the terrorism, the terrorism war, in the name of the terrorism, so thing is, is ha ha happening in Syria or in, or in Iraq. Right now, in most of the, the Iraqi the Iraqi provinces, there is not a safety. There is not the enough safe safety. Knowing that all these conflicts are affecting Iraqis quite a bit, how has the Syrian conflict been affecting? The country of Iraq. Okay, when the civil war started in, in, in started in, in Syria 2011, uh, there, there there are many the Syrian people displaced and they decided to come come to to Iraq, uh, uh, where I live it uh, around 10, 20 minutes from 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 my house. There are a big refugee campus for the Syrian refugees, especially the Kurdish Syrian, Syrian refugee. A thousand, a thousand Kurdish from Syria, they displace it, especially when the ISIS start to, to, to attack some of the Kurdish area. And also some, some, some of the Syrian, Syrian people, Arab Syrian people, uh, they left the house, they are living in, in, in Iraq. Even we have a, we have a financial and economical Problem, problem. When they came to Iraq and they affected uh, everybody's life right, in Iraq, especially, uh, especially there are many refugee camps for the for those Iraqi people who displaced in Mosul and for those Syrian people displaced in in Syria in Iraq. Where did the most of the people go? Uh, 
I don't know exactly, but I think uh, a big number of those people came to, to Iraq, uh, especially in the Kurdistan Iraq, where, where I live, because Kurdistan Iraq security is better than the, the, the other province. So what do you believe the real reason is that the conflict in Syria is happening? Oh. Uh, we have American policy and Russian policy in, 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 in Syria. When those policy crashed, the civilian became affected adversely. It affected the people adversely. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are a dictatorship in, in the power in Syria, Bashar al-Assad family. They control it. Uh, they control it. The government and the power in the Syria in the last several decades. He, he got his power from his father. Uh, uh, and the United States wants to 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 destroy the Syrian government. They so wants to. There will be another government in, in, in Syria, because the Syrian government is a Shi. The president of, of, of Syria, Syrian regime, he's a Shi, and he has a good relationship with Iran. If the, 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 the Bashar Assad loses his power, it means the United States is going to be more powerful in, in Middle East, because Bashar Assad is one of the Iran, Iran friendlies and one of the Iran allies in the Middle East, who, who maybe in the future, the, uh, in, the, in the future, Iran uses them to threat uh, the national security of Israel because they have a border with, with, with Israel. So it's more of his alliances with Iran and uh, Israel not liking that, the United States not liking that. Now, how does the Iraqis get along with the Iranians? Unfortunately, in the beginning, when I say was very, very they, they were they were very powerful, and uh, then year by year, the United States losing their position in the Iraq. And what I understand, Iran policy controlled uh, more than half of the government in, in Iraq. It means Iran is more powerful than the United States in 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 in, in Iraq. Oh, and the United States doesn't like that. Why do you think the United States is so against Iran having power in other countries? Like, if they're controlling Iraq substantially, why would that be such an issue for the United States or for Israel or Saudi Arabia or any of these countries? It will be a big issue because the United States loses many brave soldiers in, in Iraq. Uh, and uh, what I understand is the the, the the public opinion in the United States, they do not like to, to, to lose their position where, where they lose many soldiers in, in, in Iraq. And if the Iranian be strong in the Iraq, it means the Iranian hegemon, the, the Iranian power, it will be strong all over many countries and the other countries in, in, in Middle East. It will be a threat for the Israel national security, who is who's one of the uh, allies of the United States in the Middle East. And the United, well, United States foreign policy wants to, to protect it, the Israel national security. That's why I think th they are going to do everything to, to protect it, the national security of Israel. So what is Turkey's role in this whole thing? Turkey, Turkey is a member of NATO. It means the allies with the United States in, in, in NATO. What I understand, Turkey is a big problem for, for the Kurdish people because they per, per, persecuted the Kurdish people in, 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 in Turkey. Uh, we, have, we have a Kurdistan, Turkey, they persecuted the Kurdish people, they put them in the prison. And Turkey wants to have uh, an important role in, in Syria. As you know, the Turkey has a long borders with, with, with the Syria. They start an operation against it they started an operation branch of Olive to control Afrin in, in, in the 20th of, of, of January. And, and, and there, are, there were many civilian people displaced, around 200,000 Kurdish people from Afrin displaced because of the Turkish operation. Turkey wants to, 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 to destroy YPG because ideologically YPG have 
It's the same idea with PKK. PKK is a Kurdish political party who's fighting against it, Turkey in the last, in the more than three decades in Turkey. What do the Iraqi people want? Would they rather have Iran having more power or the United States having more power in Iraq? We really want people having more power, in, the Iraqi people having more power. But what, what we understand, if the United States have a more power in Iraq, they do not create a democratic government for us. And if the Iran have a more power, they want to, to take our oils. And that's why everybody, the Iraqi oil is going to, to Iran. Uh, we really want the Iraqi people having a power and we will respect it as a country. Iran is one of our my neighbors and the United States is one of the greatest countries in, in all over the world. And we will respect them, but we really want to Iraqi people have a power. If a war started with Iran and they lost, they lost. What would happen to Iraq, other than the famine? I know that there would be a lot of struggle, but do you think long-term they would gain their independence more from Iran, or do you think the United States would pretty much take over, or Israel? Uh, yeah, what I understand, if the if, if United States is attacking to, to Iran, it will be a big famine, famine like, like I said before, and also... Uh, those minority in the Iran, they, they are going to have a chance to, to, to have some freedom, maybe a freedom in the civil war. And uh, uh, right now, as you know, we have a dictatorship political system in Iran. If, if you fail this dictatorship uh, political system in Iran, you have to have an alternative for that. Uh, what's going to be after that? If the United States do the, like they will did in Iraq or they did in Afghanistan, it will be a horrible. Uh, and, and a thousand people being displaced, the Iranian people, and maybe a thousand people sacrificed, especially the civilian people. And what I understand, Iran is very different from Iraq or Afghanistan because Iran is a very white, it's a very big, big country geopolitically. And Iran is, is stronger than, than, than Saddam Hussein or, or Taliban's power in the Afghanistan. It will be a very long battle and uh, it will be a dangerous for, for, for the security and for the stability of the, all over the Middle East. I hope it will not be, 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 be a, war in, a war because I'm afraid and we, we, we sacrifice enough civilian people. We sacrifice too many. Do you, think, do you think the war drums are beating? Do you think it's going to happen? I'm, I'm really afraid uh, President Trump's policy. And what I understand, it will not going to be happen in, in President Trump's first term. If President Trump, if Mr. Trump, Donald Trump became uh, the next president of the United States for four more years, it will be a possibility. Because what, what we are understanding from the Republican policy, when they get power in, the, in, in, not in, in their second term, they will make a war. What do you think Saudi Arabia's role in all this is? Saudi Arabia is one of the United States' ally, and I think the Saudi Arabia is responsible, responsible for helping and supporting many terrorism groups, including ISIS, because ideologically ISIS, they get, they get their ideas from the Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia supported them. So you think there's going to be a war second term if, there's, if Trump stays in office. A lot of people thought that if Hillary Clinton was in office, that there would be a war her first term. Do you believe that? And do you really think that the Democrat versus the Republican is going to make a difference? Yeah, I think it will make a, a difference between uh, the United States foreign policy is dependent on the American interest, wherever it be. And it will be the Democratic or Republican, it will be the same foreign policy, but they use a different tactic or a different strategy to implement those policies, the United States foreign policy. But what, what 
uh, what we are um, what what we saw before whenever says most of those wars the United States started during those time when the Republican were in the power. Okay, so you believe that there, if the Democrats came in power, there actually would be less war, even though Hillary has a uh, had a track record of being very aggressive, and people believed we would be in war already. I mean, that was a belief is that she was more of a war warring president than Trump is right now. I no. I, 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 I'm thinking uh, Hillary, most times when the Democrats, in, I'm talking in general, first of all, I will, I will tell you the second, uh, what, what, what we experienced before, the, the, Democratian, uh, the Democratian policy outside a board, outside of, of the United States, uh, they want uh, to have a, a different solution. For example, during the Democratic and during President Obama, they had a nuclear deal with, with Iran. But right now, President Trump, Trump said, I'm against that nuclear deal with Iran. And I think uh, we will uh, have to change this deal or we will have to, to leave this deal. Yeah, people are upset about uh, treaties that, or deals we put in place that they're backing Trump is trying to get out of. Because some of them, and that's the firing of Rex Tillerson, because he had, he did not want to back out of those treaties because the, or the, not treaties, uh, agreements, because Iran was actually uh, doing their part. They're held, holding up their part of the bargain. So there's no reason to pull out. So that being said, let's get into the Palestinian issue in Israel. What do the Iraqis believe about the Palestinians in Israel? What is the perspective? Because Trump decided to move the U.S. Embassy to Bethlehem. How yes. is that affecting the views of Iraq? Is that another warning signal that there could be a war? It's a signal. and uh, It's a sign. It means Israel is going to have a more role in the Middle East. And they are going to be one of the, the, the worst part. Uh, uh, what, what I understand from the, the Iraqi public opinions, especially the Sunni Arab, uh, they really uh, hate it and, and, and they really didn't like that President Trump's decision, especially to move in uh, American ambassador to Bethlehem. But uh, as a Kurdish, you know, we, we supported the Palestinian issue before. But right now, what I understand, there is, a, there is a, a public opinion in the Kurdish people. They do not want to support Palestinian more because while the Turkey attacked to the Kurdish people in the Syria, the, the Palestinian people, they had a party to support the Turkish. Even the Turkish killed many civilian Kurdish people. Uh, uh, in, in most cases, in, in the past, uh, the religion idea, the Islamic religion ideas, take over the mind of most of the Kurdish people. But right now, I think uh, the mentality of the Kurdish people a little bit changes. There is a movement who do not support Palestinian issue anymore. Even the, 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 Palestinian, the Palestinian problem or the Palestinian issue is similar to the Kurdish issue in Iraq and all over uh, the Middle East, but we are not going to support them anymore. I understand, and you're not going to support them anymore because it's it it's you don't like the idea of Israel having more power, or why? Kurdish people, uh, they have some feeling for for some feeling compassion for the Palestinian people in some in that way, and in the other way, there are some Kurdish people. They have a feeling and some compassion for Israel because the Kurdish, uh, they have, as a Kurdish, we have some similarity with the Israel and we have some similarity with the Palestinian people. And, uh, but in, in the past, uh, we supported the Palestinian people. But right now, we do not support them, especially the Palestinian people. They do not care about the Kurdish issue anymore. 
it's like the reaction for the Palestinian action who, who support most of those dictatorship who persecuted the Kurdish, for example. The Palestinian people, they supported Saddam Hussein while he persecuted the Kurdish, while he used the Chimisen again against the Kurdish people in Halabja in 1988, and 5,000 civilian people sacrificed it. Uh, and that's why I think that the mentality of the Kurdish people changes. And, and, and especially in the, last, in the last several weeks, when the Palestinian people supported the Turkish action to persecute the Kurdish people, that's why the Kurdish in Iraq, they decided to do not, uh, in general, they decided to not support the Palestinian people anymore. Even there are some political part, Islamic political party in Kurdistan who hardly support uh, Palestinian people against the Israel. But in general, the Kurdish people do not support, I think the Kurdish people do not support uh, uh, Palestine anymore. Okay, well, let me ask you a question about culture. One of the ways that the U.S. government and the media gets the United States people to support things that are going on is they make the Muslims look very extreme, extremists. Now, how true to reality is that? Are, is there a lot of extreme, you know, they put like Osama bin Laden in a cave talking about his many wives and how he's just, it, it looks extreme to us. <coughs> Excuse me. How true, and, and the other thing about the, the, the religion being different, they also say how much they hate Christians. Now, how true is that? How much do people in that area adamantly hate Christians? A part, a part of this is true, but a part of them is, is, is lies also. Uh, what, what, what I understand from exact, ex Exactly from the Kurdistan Iraq, there are many Christian people and they do not have any problem. But there is an issue. There are some people who use who wants to use the Christianity to get asylum from you from Europe or from US. But but in, in general, uh, the Kurdish Muslim people they are nice and they are kind with, with, with the Christian people. But in the other side, there are some radical groups in, 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 in Middle East who ideologically they hate the Christian people and they hate everybody. It's not only about the Christian people. They hate everybody outside of them. For example, uh, uh, we had the ISIS group before. ISIS, you know, in some medias, especially some Christian journalists wants to show ISIS hated the Christian people more than the other religion, but it's not true. ISIS hated everybody. They don't care about you are Christian or Muslim or Yazidi. Look at this. ISIS raped a hundred, a hundred, the girls, the Yazidi girls in Shanghai in 2014. They never, they never raped the, the, the Christian people. They told the Christian people, you have two ways. You have to convert to be an Islam people or you have to give us some money. If you all choose, any of, of those people, you can live under our, our, our government because according to Quran, there is some rules for, for the Christian people. There are many prophets similar from the Bible and, and from the Quran. But uh, I'm thinking uh, the, the ISIS and most of the, 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 the terrorism groups, uh, they kill it and they persecuted the other minorities more than the Christian people. Maybe in some ways they persecuted as, as, as a Christian, but in the during that, that time they persecuted everybody. Yeah, so they're a hate group essentially. They hate everybody except who they are, which is pretty exactly. common. If you're going to hate one group, you're hating everybody. Now let's talk about the Taliban. What kind of power, since Afghanistan went down, the Taliban, from what I understand, is regaining some power. How, does that affect Iraq at all? And what is your understanding with the Taliban? Because they seem, they have been, they're really extreme. They're anti all West. They treat women horribly, from what I understand. And to me, they're scary. But what is the truth with all that? I think Taliban is a very dangerous group. Is Unfortunately, they have the support from some Arab countries, some Arab Muslim countries. Uh, uh, well, what I understand, Taliban is going to, some of the 
it's not only about the Taliban. Some of the terrorism groups, they are going to grow in all over in Syria and Iraq and, and, and Al-Qaeda. I'm afraid if there will be a coalition between those terrorism groups, maybe in the near future or in a several years, there will be another Islamic state like ISIS we, we had. Because there is a several radicalism groups in, in, in Iraq, they are going to they are going to grow in, grow in very fast. I'm, I, I'm thinking maybe they will have the support from some of the multi-millionaire people from outside, or they have the support from some Arab Arab country. And, and, the, and there is some terrorism groups who, who grow in Syria. And in the other side, we have a Taliban who's growing and who's organizing in, in, in Afghanistan. If in the near future they will make a coalition it will be a coalition between those different groups. It will be a big threat for the whole Middle East security. Even Iraq and Syria are not stable right now. In general, they are not stable. So what are the number one reasons you think that or you believe that the war drums are beating and the risk of war is very high? What I understand, there are many weapon companies in Europe and the United States. Those companies, they really needed to make a big war or a battle and to, to, to sell their, their weapons. And that's why maybe some multimillionaire people, some multimillionaire businessmen behind those groups. And there are some countries who really need the, the cheap oil. Those oil, those, uh, from 2014, the ISIS sent oil through Turkey for many countries in a very, very cheap prices. You cannot imagine. Very, very cheap. So what do you think is best for the region? If you had your dream situation, what is best for the region? I'm thinking we will have a democratic government who elected by the people without the American or Iran influence. But unfortunately, it's just only a dream. I'm, I, 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 I think we're really tired of war, killing each other, hating each other. We really need a peace. I'm asking, I'm asking the, the, the biggest country to leave us, to have a peaceful breath. Let us to have a peaceful breath. What do you want the American people to know most? We, we really want the American people know Iraq is unstable areas and there are many terrorism groups who are growing very fast and we are really afraid there will be another, another war or there will be another Islamic status in the Iraq again. And we really want the American people to help to rebuild those areas who destroyed because the ISIS, the ISIS battle and we really need American help to re American people, uh, American people, American help to rebuild Iraq again. So you're very famous in Iraq. Where can people learn more about you and what you do? I'm, 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 I'm uh, writing in diplomatic magazine in Kurdish right, right now. Uh, I hope I will write in English in the near future and uh, I have in, in, in the last several years, I worked very hard as a, an activist also to make the peace between the different groups. I, I, I really believe a peace and we really need to have a peace between uh, the peoples because Iraq is a multiculturalism country. We have a Sunni, Shi, Arab, Yazidi, Christian. We really need to have to make a peace between those different groups. I hope we will learn in from you and from the good people from the United States or the Europe to, to build a peaceful country. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining the program. You are doing a crusade that is so important. So thank you for everything that you do. Thank you so much, Sarah, for this opportunity. And I really appreciate you. And because what I understand from most of your program, you are looking to find the truth to tell the 
the United States people and to tell the every every English speaker is, and to to understand the truth about the war. It's a great job and keep going. Uh, thank you so much.